January 2017 Women's March was uh, largely funded by George Soros, who is a Nazi collaborator who also um, uh, he's admitted, self-admitted, uh, who has been funding all sorts of uh, political quote-unquote demonstrations, which is really just uh, uh, destabilizing uh, demonstrations, really just uh, uh, try to create unrest in America as part of uh, an attempt to justify authoritarian control in the U.S. that's admitted uh, in various papers. Uh, you can go look that up. Uh, maybe I'll provide a link in the comments or about section below, but uh, he is the main financier of the Feminist Women's March. Also, the 2017 Women's March uh, what the the mascot the was uh, a woman in a burqa or a hijab, uh, not a burqa, uh, but it's really a symbol of uh, institutional subjugation of women, which is ironic to say the least. I mean, it's almost deranged, uh, but again, they're using that iconography to try to um, disengage any reserves people have about uh, the, very, uh, the various immigration policies that are being carried out in, in the, the Western world, essentially, uh, throughout Europe and the United States, Canada. Um, it is really just a plan to kind of uh, destabilize, uh, take control, really. Uh, of Western countries, um, and that is really just the, the crux of everything. Uh, it's nothing to do with trying to support the uh, women. It's only because the feminism movement is a um, movement that is the natural ally of people, the globalists, who would like to uh, take take out essentially the, the West, which is the number one challenger to the uh, authoritarian control, uh, which is really just a national socialist type situation, but it's taking the money from the people and for the good of the state, which is national socialism, Nazi resources of the people and pull it together and then the central authority doles it out as they see fit which is I mean technically that's how most people would understand communism to be in the in the West just basically the feminism movement is the natural ally because these people are essentially upset at at the male dominate supposedly dominated culture that we have today which is in my opinion they're just really upset at biolo biology because as you can see the various quotes from different people like Gloria Steinem marriage is an arrangement for one and a half people how can anyone have someone who is less than a full person unless love is a self domination per se so long as if every female simply by virtue of her this is Kate Millett uh, so long as every uh, female simply by virtue of her anatomy is obliged and forced to be the sole primary caretaker of the childhood she is prevented from being a free human being like, that's the, these people, this is the mindset of these people, and this is the central, the, the family institution is the carry, is the, um, is how civilization is carried on. It really is. No, I mean, that's why this the primary target of people who want to create radical changes in society. And these people, literally, feminism, uh, well, I mean, a lot of people haven't come brushed up. I've personally brushed up with these with some feminists and this one girl I she said she the the future is going to be either there's gonna be no men essentially they're just gonna genetically engineer zygote to only have uh, X chromosomes they're gonna raise the the, the kid in uh, like artificial wombs which they already have that technology or whatever and this the kids will be raised by the state and whatever that's like this this is that they're envisioned this is like the world that they envision as 
it's going to be a loving world where the state is the ultimate caretaker and we love the kids and it's going to be great. This is the utopia they've envisioned. And it's obviously for somebody that's trying to uh, manipulate and take control of society, these people are going to be a natural ally. And that's in part why we also see Islam being used because Islam is a authoritarian institution it, that despite what many people might think in the front of this is so it's just completely subjugation to women but it doesn't really matter it's, it's the authoritarian arm of uh, the, the what they need to implement things so it doesn't really matter uh, they obviously think everybody's got their own ideas about what you know Oh, this is going to be great. We're going to have our jihad. We're going to take over the West or whatever. So they're going to be natural allies there. They're thinking they're going to do that. I mean, that's you can openly see that. That's that's declassified documents people have found. Muslim Brotherhood. You can go look. I'll put, maybe I'll put that in the description below. Uh, but you can go look at these things. Um, but yeah, George Soros. He has revealed. I mean, they're, they're openly saying. They say they want to. In, in the elite circles, they talk about the justification for doing these things that they do because they want to lower the population and a lot of people like that's in the scientific uh, aristocracy the technocracy the, the, they, this is the argument they put forth to people and I actually interviewed a guy at the, at the women's march who was talking about this exact same thing I didn't even ask him about it just brought it up like uh, uh, I mean so this is the argument they use this is the, pe this is the cohort that we're that we're dealing with when we talk about feminism uh, it's just this cabal really so George Soros uh, letter reveals globalist plan to destroy the first world by eliminating, na eliminating national borders with global migrant blitzkrieg invasions that's a do document you can go look at but people just don't understand that um, they try to say that oh well we need these people for the social programs because we're, the west is uh, not putting up the population that needs to carry on these programs which is, you know, doesn't really make sense. So they want to lower the population, but they want to bring more population in from places where they don't have cultures that, um, disc you know, discourage having ten tons of kids without, you know, fatherless babies or whatever. And then, like, they don't have the where they have the population issues primarily. They don't. They are they're taking the uh, p populations from those cultures. So it's really not about that. It's not, uh, as we can see. Um, and you can go into these different things, uh, but yeah, it's again they're just using that as the. It's essentially a a a modern day uh, way to um, hide what is essentially mercenaries. Um, I mean, what it's going to be in the future, you know, we'll see it coming, it's already panning out in Sweden and everything, uh, UK and other countries who have taken in larger amounts of these migrants, and they have, um, not, they don't assimilate, they are subject, sub, uh, subjugating the women in their, uh, societies, the women don't, you can go and find tons of interviews of people that, that are living in these western countries, women don't they live in parallel legal systems i mean it's nothing like it's not uh, yet they're gonna have these people we're gonna put these person of uh, linda sarsour who's like a hamas affiliated with through the council for american islamic relations sharia advocate linda sarsour i mean this is the boycott they use for the women's march because they're trying to cap uh manipulate the iconography to disarm people to these uh what is essentially the mercenary uh, force for their globalist uh, future endeavors. Uh, that's what they're bringing in. Um, so that's what we're dealing with here, ultimately. But, um, so these people are walking around with pussy hats. A lot of the signs are all have vaginas, like, like graphic things uh, all over. Um, people are bringing their kids through they're walking their kids around and, like the kids are getting a full dose of this like the road to hell is paid with good intentions people want to support women 
But if you wanted to support women, like they're trying to take it, make it seem like if you want to support women, you have to support these other things too. That's why this Women's March wasn't just about women's rights. It was more about other things. You couldn't just go there and talk about different women's I like women's rights issues. It was about Trump and doing whatever else. And I heard a bunch of people chanting "Black Power, Black Power," like really loud. And I mean, nobody's for taking away the rights of black people. But I mean, let's be honest: the Black Power movement is a racial supremacist movement, uh, and it's. Uh, exactly the same situation with the feminism movement is the same thing that happened with Black Lives Matter. A bunch of people came in and tried to usurp Black Lives Matter with a whole bunch of other things. And so it always goes. So also the Women's March 2017, they they, they prevented women who were pro life from joining in the women's march. So again they're trying to usurp control of what it means to have to be an advocate for women's rights or life issues so if you want to be an advocate for women in the womb let's say they didn't they don't they didn't care for your voice so it's 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 because they're trying to control the messaging the discourse they don't want people joining those uh movements and challenging the thoughts uh people were actually at this event in boston were actually physically separated uh by police uh they weren't welcomed by the organizers. Um, they wanted to support, uh, I believe it was the Resist Marxism crew, uh, who hosted the uh, previous uh, rally, controversial rally in Boston, but um, they were not allowed to go in and engage in uh, discourse, really. They were prevented. They were, they were not welcomed. And that's what that's, that's what the mentality is like a communist type of situation, a natural ally to that kind of society, where there's no family, family not in charge of their own kids. Uh, nuclear family is completely opposed to the idea of feminism um, because they view it as a subjugation of women being confined to the house when I mean, it's not the case it's just again but it's 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 these people are kind of like in in revolt against biological uh, things that are natural and evolve from biology we have to speak out we have to stand up your sign here. Do you want to talk about the sign? Yeah, it, I mean, it says women of Rojava lead the way. Rojava is the, means West and Kurdish. It's the women's liberation movement that is being led in North Syria and throughout the area that we would call Kurdistan. And um, today, Turkey is bombing Afrin. They're bombing the women who are leading this revolution for women's revolution, for liberation and democracy in North Syria. And uh, very few people in the United States know uh, about the Rojava revolution, that it's based on women's liberation and the, the impact that it's having in the Middle East. And it shows the way for all the Mid Middle East and for the world. That's so. a, I didn't know about that myself. I've been, uh, the press is pretty much dominant, uh, been focused on the Iranian revolution uh, or the Iranian uh, protests, which seem to have a similar tone. Do you have any comment on that? Or? Uh, well, women uh, around the world are throwing up their shackles and uh, taking it into their own hands to liberate themselves, not waiting for, for anyone to liberate them. I think those people that know about the Rojava revolution learned about it through the Battle of Kobani, which was against ISIS in 2014. It was really led by the, the bravery of the women's militias, the YPJ. They're, this is their banner down there. There's a lot of women who are fighting on the front lines equal to men against ISIS and for the liberation of women and uh, they played a critical role in the liberation of Raqqa um, from ISIS and they're trying to build a, a liberated society and it needs to be defended. Um, the fact that Turkey is able to fly his fighter jets supplied by the U.S., F-15 supplied by the U.S., and bomb the people of Afrin because he can't stand the idea of women uh, having their freedom 
um, and the Kurds having their freedom is really a human rights abomination that more people need to know about. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I see this as a women's march and like the, the focus seems to be more on Donald Trump, but this seems to be like a pretty big women's issue for, um, do you ever, does that ever frustrate you or? Uh, well, I think in general, you know, people here think of themselves as being in the, the center of the universe. And, but it, the more that we can learn about the world and follow the examples of people from uh, other parts of the world that have been fighting for a long time, um, to learn from them, the better off we'll be. If we isolate ourselves, then uh, we'll, we'll stay alone. So I think it's really important that we connect ourselves. And I have to say that Trump is nothing compared to Erdogan. Uh, when, when Erdogan took power and uh, the, the, the Kurdish political party in Turkey, the HDP, they elect a woman and a man for every position. And they won the mayorships in southern Turkey. And, in, and Erdogan put, put all, took all the mayors and put them in jail. And the women activists, some of them were dragged through the street naked and raped by gangs in Turkey. I mean, it's a, it's a war against women in Turkey. And um, I, we, we just have to hope that the women of Turkey, the women of Syria, of Iran, if, of Iraq, all uh, recognize that they, des that they can fight and win against this uh, patriarchal fascism that is, keeping, that is the same as that we have in the United States. So. Uh, do you think that there is any connection uh, between uh, the Islamic kind of uh, rule, the traditional Islamic rule uh, between these countries that with Sharia law and everything that's having an impact on this? Or? Oh, and Donald Trump? Well, I think there is a thread um, of patriarchy that, and the suppression of women and the use of force to suppress women and control women that is pretty ancient. Um, and that is when, when men are threatened by women, they will use the power of the state, they'll use violence um, to suppress women and women's participation in society and women's leadership. So I think that's kind of a basic concept that, um, that we see here for sure. And only when men like, the, like the, uh, the, the leader of the Kurdish Workers' Party, Abdullah Ojalan, and others recognize that the liberation of women is the key to the liberation of society. Well, you know, we have a liberated society, so. Very, very well said. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, my, my point was just, do you think uh, if there was some kind of connection as far as um, the Sharia, like the institutional uh, things that are developing for throughout Islam, uh, from Islam, that is a, but it's evolving, and do you think like this is having an impact in those countries on women's rights, or? Well, I the the uh, the the Islam that is the Islam of repression is is the same as the Christianity that's a Christianity of of oppression. There is liberatory Islam and liberatory Christianity and Judaism, etc. I don't believe that the religions themselves mean that you have to uh, you know restrict and. Uh, control and rape women. The, ISIS has an idea that they can take people who they don't believe are worthy and make them sex slaves. There's no morality in that. So it's the absence of a moral society that makes them use violence and the power of law and the state to suppress women. And that you can see in all, in all trends in all countries where they're going to use. And that's why the Kurds in this part of the world have rejected the notion of the state, in fact. They believe in ground up grassroots democracy, democratic confederalism, um, so that everyone has a voice. And I know there's a lot of people around here who think that we can vote our way out of this, but I disagree with that. I see that what we need to do is everyone has to be able to have control and voice over their own lives and um, deal with the violence in their own lives and from there on up. So, and that's what, that's the women of Rojava leading the way on that as well. Uh, vote their way out of, uh of what, of what in particular here? I, I, I'm not sure I caught that uh, connection there. Oh, that we'll be able to, like, the, if the Democrats take power or if we have women in as these representatives, that we will free ourselves of the corporate control of our government, that of a, the way that the United States uses its military to uh, suppress the rights of people all over the world in order to maintain our resources and our way of life while people obviously are you know, suffering because we are hogging all the resources and destroying the planet, um, and that we use the force of government 
for that. So uh, I don't really think it's going to make a difference to have a woman in, in uh, as who is our designated, you know, leader of the cor of corporate America in the state, you know, in the head of the United States, uh, enacting those same inequalities all around the world. So it's more of like a cultural thing you'd say you'd have to overcome to kind of. For instance, in, in our neighborhoods, as they've done in Rojava, they have communities of, say, 400 families who meet on a weekly basis to deal with the problems in their lives. They have committees set up to deal with uh, the problems that they face. With If women are being uh, subject to violence in the home, they have a women's police force to do that. They have uh, their to protect the environment. They they have a committee to do that. They don't say, and then they'll have delegates that will go to a higher level to express the views of the people. But uh, Abdullah Ojalan, who is the founder of this movement, was inspired by, of all people, Murray Bookchin, who is a social ecologist in Vermont, who promoted the idea of libertarian municipalism, that you organize on the municipal level, that that is that everyone needs a voice. And you don't say, OK, you can represent me. Um, you say that everyone deserves a voice in their own life. Yeah, I think the I think the, the issue is getting to the point where you everybody has the voice that that they can have, right? It's just like like you said, you're from in the uh, the Kurds there are f were facing oppression as far as they're not being able to speak and a lot of times can't voice their concerns and I, when somebody authoritarianly comes in and kind of shuts down, it's hard to get there. So. Well, if you're trying to go, the, the Kurds that, you know, many, some Kurds are nationalists, they want a Kurdish nation. Others one want the opportunity to, you know, um, to express their Kurdish culture and their Kurdish identity. But the important part is being able to organize to control your lives, your resources, and to have a liberatory society where the focus is on moral relationships between people, upon sharing resources, not on private profit. They're anti-capitalist for that, and that when you have those values at a grassroots level, um, you don't you're not looking to take over the state in order to abolish the state. So you're looking to take the power away from the state, as they've done in Syria, um, to uh, to maintain. Uh, autonomy and uh, control over their own lives and resources. North America okay. is groups all over, network of groups all over both the United States and Canada and um, then we have Boston Friends of Rojava and Syria okay. um, and we're on Facebook you can communicate with us that way. Former Mayor Great. Denise Simmons was here on the podium. Oh, nice I suit. I know that there were, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that things in, in, in the Senate and the House are so awful. Very nice today. suit. Our senator, our amazing senator. Where'd you get that suit? Online. I got everything online. Not Amazon? I know. The website, I'll tell you. It was sweet.com. S H W E E E. Three E. T dot com. Now you have to ask specifically for Hillary where, because they don't advertise it online anymore. But they make, or at least they used to make, sweatshirts, t-shirts, leggings, sweatpants, socks, um, tank tops. And I think that's it. But it's great. Okay? Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Are you worried about uh, the freedom of the press as far as uh, the, there's a lot of people worried about the press under the Trump administration? Are you, is anybody here worried about that? Our, our press expert? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried about it, um, but I'm happy that we have a free press. So. Uh, how about the Women's March? Uh, what are you hoping to, with the message to be the overwhelming message today? We're still here. We are still <laughs> here. going anywhere. We're using our voices. Yeah. Yeah. Keep showing up. Yep. Keep showing up. Um, have you heard about the Iranian protests going on in Iran as far as women's stuff? Uh, there's just a bunch of women's uh, protests going on over there too as well. So it's it's probably catching catching fire yeah catching on um,
sisterhood. The global sisterhood. Global sisterhood. That that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Um, what are you hoping that uh, changes you're hoping to see made in the next year, as far as women's uh, rights and everything? More women in public office. More women in public office. That uh, health care doesn't take away uh, women's rights and women's right to choose. Women's rights to choose. Uh, no, I. <laughs> What do you hope to see? Well, big I'm change kind of in the next year. Big change. Um, I think keep keep uh, change the discourse. More women. Yeah. More women in in in, uh, in, in like Congress or. Okay. Yeah. Interesting sign. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry to catch you with a mouthful. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Oh, what do you what is it? What do you mean by uh, objective reality exists? What are you What are you trying to say? Well. It's hard to know exactly what objective reality is, but there is a reality, and that's Donald Trump and other people are trying to blur the lines of reality by telling lots of lies, causing a lot of confusion, and just want to remind people that there is one truth. You can't pick your own truth. True. Pick your own facts. Absolutely, absolutely. How, how, who's, who's to say what's true, though? We can argue about what's true. We can do a scientific study and try to find the truth. So the scientists. Science is definitely an important uh, aspect of this. Yes. Excellent. So, so we should be deferring to scientists to to determine what's true. Um. Well, that's an interesting statement. I mean, we should we should definitely take the input of scientists, but we should take input from lots of people. A lot of times there's philosophical considerations, humanitarian considerations. You know, we have to have compassion. If the science tells us it's okay if a few people die because, you know, some people will be happier, you know, we, we can make a choice about that. Ultimately, it's not just a scientific choice, but we can't ignore the reality that we learn from science when we make those choices just because it doesn't suit our needs. Okay. All right. Well, I think I'm going to put that into consideration then. <laughs> Thank you very much.